helping people to control the use of their own natural resources, to grapple with their vulnerability to a rapidly changing climate, to safeguard a woman's reproductive rights, the right to health, the ethical use of information in a digital world, to honor and respect people's sexuality, to give children the space and opportunity to learn, to eliminate urban blight, revitalize neighborhoods, to put affordable homes within reach, to promote true democracy inherent in the right to speak publicly about these things. Nearly 80 years ago, Henry Ford and his son Edsel devoted $25,000 to form a foundation, autonomous and apart from the Ford Motor Company, to support science, education, and charitable causes. By 1965, when John Jay College was first getting to its feet, the Ford Foundation had become the largest philanthropy in the world, with the audacious mission of tackling humankind's most pressing problems, whatever they might be. In New York City, another newborn institution, the Vera Institute of Justice, had made progress on a single chronic problem, incarcerated people unable to afford bail. If there was a theme, it was poverty and the law. Uh, how does justice affect poor people? There was also a deep commitment to the Bill of Rights. Not every foundation had that or has it today. We applied for a major grant. At the time, I think it was a million dollars. That was large dollars then. But it's not just Ford dollars that are important. It's Ford itself and who they are and what they stand for. It's good money, as it were, and it helped give Vera needed prestige, which we didn't have at that time. I don't think it's too much to say that Vera might not be here today had Ford not been there for Vera. That support from Ford runs right up to today with the Vera Institute's Pathways from Prison to Post-Secondary Education Project to bring high-quality education and re-entry support to prisoners. We posit a number of questions at the Ford Foundation. What ifs? What if, in fact, you go beyond the bare minimum of providing people in prison with a basic education and provide them with a high-quality post-secondary education, much better than they ever had when they were kids? What if, in fact, you created innovative college programs in every single jail and every single prison all over America, all over America, so that you can, in fact, turn car thieves and robbers and drug dealers into engineers and entrepreneurs who can take their critical thinking skills to solve the most vexing problems in America, including mass incarceration and breaking the intergenerational cycle of poverty. John Jay is the leading institution that we at the Ford Foundation and many in philanthropy and government turn to as our go-to partner to help solve America's criminal justice problems. Ford's longtime support of John Jay programs, such as the college's Center on Media, Crime, and Justice, is making a decisive difference. Last November, Ford's help made possible John Jay's American Justice Summit, hosted by Tina Brown that brought thought leaders from all sectors into dialogue on real solutions to problems plaguing the justice system. And the U.S. Department of Justice recently launched a national initiative for building community trust and justice to be spearheaded by John Jay. We've seen in Baltimore and in Ferguson and on Staten Island the distrust between community residents and law enforcement. The work that John Jay is doing with the Justice Department seeks to understand and reverse this insidious trend. Now rolling out in six cities across the nation, it addresses bias, procedural injustice, and the need for reconciliation between law enforcement and communities. Appropriately, its first convening was at the Ford Foundation. We at the Ford Foundation are proud to have been on this journey with the John Jay College from the beginning. To my friend Jeremy Travis, I'm sorry I can't be with you tonight, but congratulations to John Jay College on 50 years of remarkable leadership in the field of criminal justice.